Every one of us has, at some point, stared into the abyss, fantasizing about cataclysmic events. A nuclear holocaust, a devastating pandemic, an uncontrollable artificial intelligence. We seem simultaneously terrified and entranced by the idea of world-altering events. In a world in which these scenarios scarcely become reality, it's fiction which gives these fantasies form. Through fiction, we feel the horror without paying the real-world price. Witness the companionship and camaraderie built through shared trauma without going through any of it ourselves. However, in the realm of fiction, we're far from passive spectators. We are a sort of participant ourselves. Stories serve as sandboxes for our psyches, allowing us to explore our courage, our integrity, and our capacity for empathy. When we engage with tales of dystopia or apocalypse, we don't just immerse ourselves in calamity, we experience it viscerally. We become emotionally invested, taking on the fears, hopes, and losses of the characters as if they were our own. We consider what we would do if placed in similar situations, whether grappling with the cycle of hatred in Attack on Titan, reflecting on what we would do if faced with the indiscriminate violence of the Gun Devil's attack, or confronting the mental toll of totalitarian regimes in THX 1138 and 1984. These stories compel us to reflect on the boundaries of our own moral landscape. But what happens when the narrative steps off the page and begins to stir real-world debates? Take, for example, the passionate discussions surrounding Berserk and Attack on Titan. The Eclipse and the Rumbling are not merely topics for fan theories, but evolve into legitimate debates about morality, power, and the nature of good and evil. Debates that can have immense consequences on the way people view the debate participants themselves. Consider those that passionately defend Griffith's role in the Eclipse, framed by others as being monstrous rape apologists. Consider those who defend the initiation of the rumbling, labelled as proponents of genocide and supporters of fascistic ideals. These debates, although grounded in fictional universes, are a microcosm of larger societal dialogue about ethics and responsibility, and can have consequences on those involved if their language is not couched carefully. So this raises the question, if narratives stir our thoughts and our rage, what impact will technology have on this domain? What is the future of the fictional abyss? What will happen when AI-generated apocalyptic tales are tailored to your individual psyche, serving you personalized nightmares, satisfying your fascination with world-ending events to an unseen extent? It may offer unprecedented escapism, yet also poses unprecedented risk. Your deepest fears, biases, and moral inclinations being read by an algorithm to produce personalized narratives. But will these narratives push the boundaries of your moral landscape? Or will they create a world of echo chambers where viewpoints are amplified rather than questioned? There is a value in apocalyptic fiction. It's an engaging method of getting us to question the extremities of our morality. But how are we to know if our conclusions are valid if no one is around to challenge our stances? While this AI-driven world could satisfy our craving for escapism, it may also create an uncritical audience, unwilling or unable to confront moral complexity. It could trap us in personalized ethics bubbles where our moral growth is stunted by lack of exposure to different perspectives. So as we dive into the future of these narrative worlds, perhaps we should tread carefully. For fiction is a double-edged sword. Give it power and it can illuminate or distort, liberate or entrap. And perhaps if you stare unchallenged into a fictional abyss, well, beware a real apocalypse.